Hi, I'm Ryan Blackwell, the co-founder of Beyond Photography, and this is Natasha Vinga, the other co-founder of Beyond Photography, um, here at our Utopia exhibition at NDSM Fuse. And today we're here with Arthur Cambio and Stella Marbles. Um, we're really happy to have you here, two of the artists featuring in the exhibition, so uh, would you mind introducing yourselves a little bit for, um, for the viewers? Can you start? So, I'm Stella Marbles. I am a a uh, drag artist, events producer, multimedia, creative, and mask designer. I'm Arthur Condio, I'm also an artist. I go from various disciplines in a mixed mesh of psychedelic, eco-deviant practice, and that, that feels it up. <laughs> um, I think that's kind of like a good place to start what we were just talking about before off camera is what is eco deviancy and what is it to you how does it sort of fit into your work yeah um, so the very first time I kind of um, encounter eco deviancy as a word was from C. Conrad which for me was more of a, of a theoretical view about eco deviancy and that's the moment I felt that to connect it with my practice eco deviant had to come to become like a practical practice that really is something that everyone can do on an everyday basis and, and really go into it so it's a mix for me of embracing uh, perverse subjectivities and deviancy that everyone has within but at the same time um, totally overlapping with the idea of abundance that we have around us, that Earth is giving us, that we have for each other. So so yeah, that's for me where Echo Deviant come more as an artistic practice. That's really interesting. And could you maybe tell us a little bit more about the work that you're showcasing at Utopia and how that fits in with um, what you were just telling us about? Yeah, totally. Um, so I'm presenting uh, a video of the Empathic Bootcamp to Disgust. Uh, this one is a training about this soap. Uh, so as a, a collection of encounters, it's online but it's also physically here, uh, the idea is like it's a training that trained the viewer to, to decolonize the vision that Western society has of Disgust. So, how to bring a bit of different vision upon what we would consider as something disgusting or as something clean. So here I'm presenting you a tutorial how to do your own piss soap at home for everyone to be able to <laughs> wash themselves with their own body fluids or others body fluids and, um, and basically it's kind of joined with a pistol butt plug that I did also that are there to decay the shape of the fountain so also people actually can use the pistol there and um, so yeah that's what I'm presenting here. It's interesting that you kind of like develop this series like even more and more and I think one of my favorite things about this is that you have these soaps here available to purchase as well and like even like when we've been setting up like you have these in this bag and people are so like intrigued by these soaps because it is so like interesting and also funny and comical that you can kind of have something that is both clean and as you say disgusting at the same time um it creates this like real sweet spot of like thinking where you're like what is this like can i wash my hands with this or do i need to wash my hands after i've used this yeah. like, um, and i think like you know it's really fascinating and even like when we have the fountains turned on and like you can hear them and they move it just creates like such a um such an atmosphere of like the work as a whole um and between that thought of like i guess nature i think that kind of is a really interesting place to bring you in that because your work is kind of like it has this this piece behind us has this real natural element but it's also like juxtaposed with something that's so unbelievably technological and artificial as well maybe you could kind of introduce your work and some of the ideas behind it yeah so i've been a mask designer for about three years um and that's mostly been with plastics but then in the last year i think especially with lockdown i wanted to explore uh, our existence in the virtual world especially the queer community's existence in the virtual world and how our identities are shifted or changed in that kind of 
non-corporeal space, but when looking at kind of this idea of the future and how queer identities are going to evolve as we go forward, I got really interested in bio design and also this idea of transhumanism, not just transgressing what it means to be queer or what it means to be a, a man or a woman, but what it means to be a human and, and, and how um, not just technology, but also how biology can be used to help us explore that in new ways. Um, and often those explorations can be really, especially with biology and technology, they can be really rigid and they can be very critical and there are all these scientific processes that have to be in place. Um, whereas when you take that from an artistic perspective, you don't have to follow the rules and you get to really break down um, all these scientific notions and merge them to hopefully help us find new visions of, of, of queerness in the future that aren't just, they're both biology and technology all mixed together in some, in some big mush, basically. <laughs> I think that's really interesting, and I guess it kind of makes me think what is sort of the, what is like the queer obsession with the future. Even this exhibition and so many conversations that we've had with so many artists today, why is it that we are constantly looking forward? Like, what are we, what are we pushing for? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting point. It's one I've been asking myself a lot because I think queerness is always about pushing again both pushing against kind of the norms and the structures of society, but in doing so, we're inherently asking for more and we're inherently asking, you know, why we do things the way we do and how can we do them better and how can we be better, how can we be different? And it's, um, like you said, in, in that deviance and in that kind of difference is where we have ingenuity and change. And that just isn't for queerness, that's in science, that's in, you know, politics, like what is different and what is a kind of a hybrid is usually what leads us to the future, but it's also the most terrifying thing. And it's the thing that doesn't really ma always make sense. Um, and so it's a really fun place uh, to sit, but obviously it often puts queer people in the, in the line of fire. Yeah, definitely. And like, what would you kind of like add to that? Oh, because I think because your work is kind of about deviancy and about kind of like shaking up like how we think about like you say like dis uh, disgust and how we think about cleanliness like what what is your kind of perspective here on this idea of moving forward in the future what are you trying to communicate through your work in that sense um i mean for me i i don't see queerness in the present so it's always a vision of the future um and, and i think like for all queer beings to to really be living in a queer world. It doesn't have to be an utopia, but just a queer world that everyone could be themselves. It's in the future, it's not now. So so I think we are, as artists, it's an, in a way our duty to also add possibilities in the world. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, that's what we need to do. And so that's why maybe queer artists always feel like proposing possibilities for a queer future is also part of, at least I feel it as part of my personal work. And that becomes my artistic work in a way. Um, my vision, my personal vision of the future is really, uh, that's, you see it in my aesthetic. I, I want to go all the way. I want to, to like destroy everything that has to be destroyed to really make, for me, it comes very much from these TV shows where anything imaginable can happen. And that's my future world where I want to be. So I'm, I'm not saying that what I'm doing is going to be beneficial for the future. I hope, <laughs> but we'll see. But I think that my, at least I owe to the world to propose this as why not do it in the future? Where would we go? So for me, what I understood with disgust and also as a queer being is we experience disgust on a, on a social it, it's society has been putting over quite some years before and now it's really changing but this gust was the discourse for queer people to be outed of the, the society so I kind of try to to bring this gust on a practical level to a place of like 
kindness and for yourself so that's why also using like your own body fluid for creating something for me is just like this kindness to yourself so so yeah it's it's i'm giving like milestone for a possible future but i'm really wanting to see like as many milestones as there is people in the world yeah I find it super interesting what you just said about how you, with your work, almost like destroy something for the future to become better. And I guess that comes from a philosophical saying of before things get better, everything kind of has to go in complete anarchy and has to fall apart. Do you both, as both of your works, kind of look at this theme of destruction or um, you know a degradation? Do you both believe that this has to happen in a way before the, yeah this queer future can really? I think Rise. so, yeah, because I think I connected with what you were saying about uh, like queer people existing often as an embodiment of disgust in social spaces and kind of taking ownership of that sense of otherness and alien and that monstrosity within ourselves and the whole, I think the root of it is that when we are exposing that to, through art, to the public, that exists within every single person. That fear of difference, that fear of change, that fear to be monstrous, to be disgusting, to be chaotic. Um, but hopefully in the process of exposing it, um, people can start to recognize within themselves and kind of become friends with their own monsters and see it as a point of possibility and a point of growth rather than something terrifying. But also on a social level, uh, like when, when we made these boards and we asked, you know, what is your queer utopia? I was like, it is a world that, you know, is without, you know, transphobia, homophobia, racism, capitalism. And those are all structures that are so ingrained that I don't think we can move past them without some sort of destructive process. But I don't think we need to look at that kind of destruction and that chaos as something fearful. I think the more we look at it as something that is exciting with potential, the more it can be so. You know, it's, it's about unlearning all these ingrained fears and then giving them new definitions and new modes of being. Sounds a bit wanky, but that's yeah. <laughs> no, but I think it is, it is so true. And I think what you've both said, but specifically what you kind of honed in on is that idea of like, if you are a queer person, or if maybe you kind of felt queer from a really young age, like I did, and I should be vested too, is like that feeling of difference and separation, it stays with you from like such a young age all the way to um, now. It never goes away. <laughs> and I think, you know, even like for, us, like for us sort of making this exhibition, I really wanted to kind of create an exhibition that felt really positive because we don't have that a lot, like we don't have those like positive visions of the future. But then like what you guys have kind of done, I think, is like really, really digging deep into those feelings. So you're kind of like saying like, here is the separation of me versus like the normal. And out of that, you've created these pieces that like even like us as curators can like really like resonate with but I'm interested to know is it hard to get into that mindset how do you get into that mindset of like this is a, th these topics that you guys are discussing they're like existential they're the deep they're the deepest possible questions of the mind is it hard to get into that headspace can you do it for long periods of time or do you have to like come out of it and be like, oh, I can't think about this anymore. Like, what's the, does that make sense? Um, should I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, for me, the, I, community is very important, which means that I, I don't think that I would be able to, to have done anything without the community around. And especially like finding the empowerment within uh, my monstrosity. It's something that I would never have done if I would not have um, a supportive structure around me. And I think that that's what the, the, the queer community can bring to each other and, and, and help. But I think as long as there is a sort of a standard to fit, then there will always be someone that doesn't. And it's, 
when you are young, it's more difficult to understand this because you feel more lonely. And that's at the moment I found a community that actually related to my monstrosity in not being the same than mine, but being something totally different. Again, that's the moment I started to understand that so many um, diverse beings can come together and feel empowered. So, so yeah, I would say that for me, it's the, the tipping point in this queerness was finding uh, people alike that are absolutely not alike, but yeah, that we definitely. share this difference yeah. together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I definitely resonate with that, and I think what you were saying about how in the queer community, but also often in queer art, you know, we in even in the media, we're often so focused on all of our struggles, both past and present, um, and which we should, you know, like we have to focus on our present struggles to overcome them. But at the same time, it's like we can't move forward as a community or globally without you knowing what we're reaching for. You know, what future are we working towards? What future do we want to see for ourselves and for other people as well? Um, so I think reminding ourselves of that and doing, kind of trying to envision that through our art practices uh, is really helpful because we, it kind of, like you said, it shows that, that bright side. Um, but like you were saying, I think in terms of how do we uh, personally connect with that as artists, I definitely think it is through community spaces. Like I do a lot of work in uh, nightlife and producing events in various, you know, community creative spheres, and that is a constant source of inspiration. And seeing because these spaces are where people can be themselves and can explore that sense of what is the what is the most me that I can be? What is the freest that I can be? What is the most beautiful and the most monstrous that I can be? And getting to celebrate that with other people, you know, seeing that uh, opens up so much possibility within yourself. Um, and it definitely, when I'm making art, even though most of my work is related to, you know, the face and identity on maybe a personal scale, it's all rooted in this, um, this communal, creativity, activism, and love, uh, because it reminds me, you know, the emotional core of what we're working towards. I, yeah. I guess we usually end with the question, what does your queer utopia look like? But I, I think we've <laughs> spoken about it and we've covered it. So maybe on a more short term, uh, a sh more short term question is, do you have any big plans uh, as for you yourself as artists in the near future that you're working on or that we can get excited to see or anything more near us in this period in time to get to that queer utopia that you've been speaking about later on in the future? Do you have something? So I, in London, I run a lot of different events. So, if anyone in Amsterdam can make it, yeah. <laughs> a little um, self promo. Yeah. Soon, uh, I run, but I also it's also doubles as a as an online platform as Cookie Jar, and we're kind of a queer creative collective for drag artists and club kids who don't fit the mold. Um, and we also have a YouTube channel, and we do all sorts of stuff. And. I don't know what else we're doing, but it'll definitely. That's be. a lot that you're doing. So that's really, <laughs> really great. It'll be, it'll be something. <laughs> I'm curious. I'm gonna check. This. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, it's, it's. Let's be honest. Like, pandemic was a great uh, eye opener concerning disgusting and what's the idea of contamination. So actually, I had the pleasure of receiving a design award for the pistol. Uh, which, which was in the category of future thinking and, and for me this was the moment I started to understand that I need to consider myself and this project as actually a project of the future and my idea would to be so this is the cosmetic uh, recipe there is a non-cosmetic recipe which is made to clean let's say more spaces and so on which is made out of only waste because it's uh, basically ashes from wood uh, piss from anywhere in the city and a snack bar oil, frying oil that is recycled. And basically what I would like to do is implement this on a municipal level and a more local that people could like create a pistol factory that could recycle 
elements of the city and redistribute it to the cleaning services of the city. So, so that's kind of my future thinking of, of the BISOP would be to get it to a level of actually implementing it somewhere in a society where it's not, it's outside of my artistic vision and actually it starts having a social impact. That, that would be really like the future I would love for. That's that sounds amazing. amazing. <laughs> I feel like that needs to be, once you get it started here, we'll start it in London. Yeah. Please, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. I would love to. I would love to, yeah. yeah. Um, well, thank you both yeah, so much you for so um, much. doing this, but also being in our exhibition as well. I think like you guys and the conversations that we've had have really challenged our way of thinking yeah. as well and like really opened our minds to like what is possible as curators, as um, people who run a platform. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much.